Welcome to HobbyHotTips.com. We are going to have another video of adding green stuff to a Necron Doomsday Arc or Ghost Arc. So we're going to roll out some green stuff and we're going to use our Spine Push Template. So we're going to roll that down and then push the template and you'll see that the form of a spine is going to be coming up. And we'll use our scraper knife to scrape off the excess and we'll get to sculpting. We're using Vaseline as we're working with green stuff. It makes it a little easier to work with. If you um, touch it with your fingers, it won't leave fingerprints. So if you haven't ever given that a try, try it out. Uh, it works pretty good. Let's move the spine into position and we'll start cutting the sections of the spine so it looks like they're separate bones. Uh, so we can use either a hobby knife or you could even use a stainless steel sculpting knife or a sculpting tool. You'll find the sculpting tool will give you just wider sections as you press them in. And once that's done we'll start making uh, little indentions um, to make the uh, bone that's closer to the spine uh, kind of sink down but as it gets wider, it'll start rising up just for uh, a nicer 3D effect for the bones. Now we're going to use a, sol a soft sculpting tool. It has a rubber end, and we're going to give some detail to the inside of the uh, rising bone so that it kind of uh, craters in a bit, um, so it has more of a realistic bone look to it. Once we have all of that detail done, we're going to go to the sides of where we made the indentions at first to uh, solidify which bones were which. We're going to kind of push in those uh, little sculpts a little bit deeper um, and push those in. That way we have a more rounded look. They kind of get boxy when you put the um, craters in the middle of the uh, material. So we're just going to push it in to give it a round, uh, more natural bone type of a feel. Now let's grab our Doomsday Arc and we're going to apply it to the uh, to the back right here. You'll see there's a nice section. We'll put some super glue down and we'll move our sculpt on top of it. Um, it is a little bit uh, more difficult to attach green stuff to plastic even using super glue if you use uh, Vaseline, but it's still very doable. So because we're using Vaseline, we're able to um, touch the green stuff without leaving too many fingerprints. Um, so you'll see in this video I will be touching the green stuff here and there, but it's fine. It doesn't really uh, take too much of the detail off and it doesn't leave fingerprints. We will re-sculpt um, everything we lay down too because things do kind of get a little out of whack when you put it down, but it, that way you just uh, keep the uh, quality up and it's good to go over the detail of green stuff anyway because it does expand while it's setting. So we're using a soft sculpting tool and just pushing everything into place. Um, that way the glue does uh, adhere to the green stuff and the model as well. If you just kind of let it sit there without pushing it down, it could leave some gaps into the gluing process. And you'll notice that there's a little piece right there that uh, we didn't cover with the green stuff. So what you do is you basically just sculpt another piece and cut off uh, one tiny bone and then put it where you need it. That way it gives you some control as to the length of each sculpt. So we put down a little bit of glue and now we're going to just press that sculpted bone into place. And then as usual just go over the details again to make sure everything looks good. So we'll use the soft sculpting tool to kind of push everything where we want it. And then we'll use a hard sculpting tool or the stainless steel one to just give it the harder to find lines that you can't really get with the soft sculpting tool. So as to not take up too much time, we're going to go ahead and skip um, the process of sculpting the entire spine and just show as we lay down the rest uh, of the coverage for the green stuff on this back end of this doomsday arc. So that is something that we pre-sculpted and measured out. We're going to put it on the top arc and we measured it with the template first. We'll, we'll show a demonstration of that and then just lay it down. And then because some of the green stuff is exposed on the end, we're actually going to push kind of a uh, round 
uh, bone marrow type of an imprint there to give it some uh, nice details so it's not just flat and bulky. And once that's done, we'll just continue pressing down, um, keeping the um, details and making sure everything's in a straight line. Now when we move on to other sections, sometimes you'll just have little pieces of the uh, spine left over so that you can kind of just lift it up to pre-measure how many you need to cut. So right there it shows that I'm kind of eyeballing it, holding it up right next, and then cutting the amount that I need to fill the gap. So then we'll put glue down and then place it where we need it, and then just use our sculpting tools to make sure that it fits nice and clean. And then you can see I start even sculpting um, some of the green stuff that I've already put down. Again, green stuff kind of likes to get puffy as it's setting up, so it's okay to kind of take a look at everything, and if you see if there needs to be any adjustments or you need to go over some more details again, go ahead and do it so you don't regret it later and think, ah, I should have, you know, I shouldn't have let that settle so fast. Here's another piece that we measured out. Just put it down, and as usual, just go over the details to make sure everything's set up nice and solid. And sometimes as you um, sculpt things out, the green stuff will spread. So what looks like it um, may be big enough or small enough for a certain area, you may find that you need to either add or subtract green stuff as you go. It's kind of better to undermeasure it because if you find that it's too big, you may have already glued it down. So it's kind of better to um, go one less than one above. As you can see here, I went one less. And it turned out I did need it, and it's easier to add a little piece instead of trying to cut and scrape a piece of glued green stuff onto your model. So there's a quick hot tip for you if you ever find yourself doing this type of a project. At first when I started this, I was tempted to just um, not even measure the different sections. As If you've ever done this model before, you know that there are um, clearly sections that um, you could just put green stuff right over it. And it might still look good, but it looks more custom if you have these um, pieces here pre-measured out, cut with gaps in it, and it just complements the model so it looks a little bit more um, custom and specialized that way. So here you see I just flipped the model to give myself a better, uh, more comfortable um, hold while I'm sculpting. Uh, just be careful especially because the green stuff is kind of going all the way around to the other end of the model. You don't want to find yourself resting it and squishing any green stuff that you've already sculpted. So see how right there I'm kind of just manhandling the green stuff. If you were using water right there it would it would totally ruin your sculpture. So if you want to be able to handle green stuff that loosely, uh, Vaseline gives you that option. So. Uh, sometimes Vaseline's good, sometimes it's not that great. I find with uh, things you want to look more um, sharp, water's a better way to go, but then again you don't have the freedom of being able to touch it with your fingers. So right now I'm coming in from the other side of the sculpture, and right here you'll notice that I did over measure it. So I'm trying to be very careful, and there's a part where there is no glue, and that's where I cut it, and let's try to move it off so that I don't get any glue on the knife. Um, so green stuff doesn't um, get applied to an area that I want to not have any green stuff or any uh, nasty molding or just basically a rough spot where there's obviously glue and green stuff smushed together. So that's how you handle that. You would just um, put something underneath so that you can cut it and even maybe a soft sculpting tool to hold down the part that you want to keep on the model. And you know, if you do find that you accidentally um, mess up the sculpture a bit, it's fine because you have to go over those details anyway. Here's a, an example of me using the template to actually measure out uh, how many bones that I need to do, use to fill the gap. So um, it's kind of nice to have the template so that it helps you pre-measure what you're needing to do. And there's the pre-measured piece. Fits in right there. And we'll put it down, and there you go. I hope you enjoyed the second part of our adding green stuff to uh, Necron Doomsday Arc or Ghost Arc. Um, the next video we're going to do, we're actually going to do a skull scarab. And uh, I'll show you a picture right now of what that's going to look like. If you enjoyed this sculpture project, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, leave comments if you have any questions, and thanks for coming to HobbyHotTips.com.